the big oops, our greatest calamity. A testament to the power of the major arcana, our passionate, jealous gods who preoccupy themselves deeply in our affairs. Despite its bigness, the oops did not defeat us. We saw another daybreak and then another, an endless sequence of blank slates and broken days, that messy, gorgeous endeavor of living, and all it takes is the fool. Hi, my name is Jay Stroman. I'm the lead designer for A Fool's Errand, and today I want to talk to you about the world and the lore of the game. A Fool's Errand has a ton of lore to play around in and to explore, but the game actually came from the world building and not the other way around. This world has been in development for about three or so years. It's a collaboration between myself and my creative partner, B. Marsolier, who, by the way, if you have seen any of the art assets for A Fool's Errand, that is all B. so go and give her a follow because she's amazing. She did this incredible cover. B and I created this world for a campaign of a different TTRPG that we were playing, but as the campaign went on, the world got bigger, it started to gain its own life and personality, and as it got so big, we realized that we needed to create a game that sort of captured that unique feeling, and so we've made the system that is specialized for the world. So without further ado, let's do a deep dive into the world and the lore, starting with the gods. The gods of this world are the major arcana, minus the fool and minus the world, which we'll touch on later. Think Greek mythology with these gods. They're often up close and personal, and they can resemble people. You could play the devil like a goat person. You could play the empress like a bunch of woodland creatures who all speak as one. Or you could be a bit more abstract with it. The moon could be the literal moon in the sky, or the hermit could just be this feeling of isolation. Whatever way you want to play it, it's going to work. There are 20 gods in this pantheon, and you can customize it not only to your campaign, but to each player's character. However it shakes out, these gods are here to take a piece of you. They're here to take a piece of your adventure. They want to influence you on your journey. And as they do, they will start to incite calamities as they get jealous of each other and your relationships to the other gods. And you will have to deal with the calamities because you are the fool. The Fool, if you know Tarot, is also Major Arcana, which makes you a god yourself, but you're kind of like this little baby god who has all this unrealized potential. Your adventure will be marked by these Major Arcana who want your potential. And the unique part of The Fool is that they only become Major Arcana when they set out on their journey to see the world, whether they do so consciously or not. And the world is your journey. It lays in wait, it watches as you endure every trial and tribulation, and it observes all the major arcana who reach out for pieces of your journey. And like how the fool only becomes the fool when they set out on their journey, the world is only manifest when the fools are ready to realize their potential. And when that happens, the world will change completely and your campaign will conclude. Let's zoom in a little bit and talk about the world that you're going to play in, the Fifth Collide. The Fifth Collide is made up of five unique regions, which is partly where the name came from, each with their own biome and personality. You've got the Phantom Isles, which is sort of like our tropical rainforesty type area. And here, you'll find a lot of unstable sentient flora, like the dreaded Daddy Palm Legs. Then we move over to the Thoroughlush, which is this massive, temperate, mountainous plains area. And here you'll find a lot of fairies and fae who just want one more game of truth or dare. Then we move up to the Cold Breaks, our frozen tundra area. Here, ghosts live in and out of cities, some malicious and some are just wandering. We move down to the Good on Wilds, where dinosaurs walk the arid badlands, and there are mosquitoes so big that they threaten to guzzle the gas out of your car. And finally, the Crown Lands, where the capital city exists, and here, the biggest threat of them all, bureaucracy. And that's an overview of the Fifth Collide. It is a place that has been marred by countless calamities and the Big Daddy calamity, the Big Oops, which was the previous apocalypse. But despite the fact that this is technically a post-apocalyptic world, it is still vibrant and neon and loud and busy and diverse and quiet and monochrome and sleepy. And all of it is the major arcana's playground and all of it is the path that the fools will walk. 
So, who are the people that live in the Fifth Collide? It's mostly a mix of androids, humans, and those in between. There is no hierarchy between androids and humans, they walk as one. And in fact, the world has existed for so long that it's not clear anymore whether humans created androids or androids created humans. Composite beings, which are humans with android parts or androids with human parts, are more rare just because it costs a lot of money to get that done. There's only so many surgeons who have been legally trained. So if you want to play a composite being, ask yourself, did you come from a rich family or do you just know someone who's halfway decent with a hacksaw? The Fifth Collide has existed for a long time though, and there are new life forces that have made their presence known. Like I said, there's fairies, there's ghosts, there's dinosaurs. And some people think that the Major Arcana created these beings, and some people think that these beings have been around as long as androids and humans. And these are all questions that you could answer by playing your own campaign. There is a lot of lore to this world, but we leave a lot of gaps for you to fill in with your own story. One thing that is unique about androids, humans, and those in between is the fact that they have true names. A true name is a little piece of magic that's attached to you that makes you, you. Your true name is a single word, it's often large in concept, and it encapsulates your identity whether you want to push against it or follow it. If you're someone who ends up spending your entire life protecting other people or looking after people, maybe your true name is Sentinel. True names are broad and they're big concepts, and in that way they're kind of similar to how Major Arcana are titled. You receive your true name upon coming of age, but if someone has your true name, they can do a lot of damage to you, so you keep it close and you keep it hidden. And thus, everyone on the Fifth Collide uses fluid names. These are names that reflect your personality, your job, your affinity to a major arcana, or something else entirely. Fluid names can change as many times as you like, and they just sort of reflect the phase of your life that you're in. If your character's an entertainer, maybe you'll pick the name Can Can or Lyric. If your character is an office worker, maybe you'll pick the name Pencil Push. If your character loves the hermit, maybe you'll pick the name Isoline. Your true name is you at your core, and your fluid name is how you present to the world. So these can be anything, and they can be as serious or as silly as you would like. We've talked about the physical world that you'll play in. What about the metaphysical world? What awaits us on the other side of sleep? For humans, that's the dream network, a place where they go when they fall asleep and dream. And for androids, it's the digital network, a place where they go when they shut down or rest. When one enters the network, the body and the mind undergo a bit of a separation in which the body stays in the physical world and the mind transports to this esoteric realm and accepts it as the new reality. However, proceed with caution. A connection still exists between your mind and your body if you die in the game, you die in real life. Any injuries incurred in the networks will be taken back with you to your physical body. Most people on the Fifth Collide don't go to the networks, or if they do, they don't remember it. They might recall it like a nightmare, but if they are going to the networks, they're just barely scraping the surface. A fool, however, or someone who's extremely practiced, can go deeper into the networks, and at the edge of the networks is a place where you can have any question answered. And when I say any, I mean any. But this is a dangerous task. Traversing the networks is no easy feat. Time works differently there. There are glitches there who want to attack you and slow you down. Or you might find a place that's just so enticing you don't want to leave. It's just like what Leo DiCaprio taught us in that movie about dreams or whatever, which is based on an anime called Paprika, which is in our touchstones and you should watch it, but that's neither here nor there anyway. And that is a surface level dive into the world and the lore of a fool's errand. I mentioned this sort of vaguely at the top, but the campaign that B and I made this world for is called Planet Arcana. It's an actual play, and you can deep dive headfirst into the lore. There's like 80 something episodes, and you can get totally immersed in the world by listening to it. There is so much more lore for you to explore in the Fool's Errand book. There are a ton of NPCs who are vibrant and illustrated and really interesting. There's a ton of locations within the regions that you can explore. There are enemies you could put up against the fools like denamed assassins, disasteroids, glitches, daddy palm legs, hostile fairies, and more. There is so much lore in this book for you to sink your teeth into. But like I said, there's also a lot of gaps for you to fill in as you play the campaign or as you build your initial big oops. In closing, I would like to read you an excerpt from an in-universe book 
called On the Nature of Nonsense by Professor Dr. Hullabaloo. To walk this calamity-laced path is folly. To ignore it is absurd. O fools, your errand awaits. <laughs>